Eden, Eden till now. what is this 2019 I'll pray we'll start All right, our Father in heaven bless us as we try to understand heaven's plan for true higher education I ask it in Jesus name amen. amen now everybody's got different ideas right now I bet you Addie's got some ideas and Devin you all have your and Marie you got your ideas about true education but do your ideas coincide with God's ideas Isaiah 55 8 are your thoughts his thoughts that's the question so I'm going to hold you down to uh, what God said well I think I know you think but what does God say is that okay so very simple now so somebody need a Bible this morning There's one or two verses that I didn't put up here 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3 the devil is subtle right and a thief John 10 then he comes to steal now what did he steal from Eve ah one little simple word you have to say it louder, say it louder. Simplicity. The simplicity that was in Christ. Mm -hmm. He stole her simplicity. Question for you, are you simple today? Mm -hmm. okay, I'm, I'm, all right, that's how it work. <laughs> I'm trying to. Now, uh, uh, Acts, uh, Genesis 1, 26, let us make man in our image. And then God said, Adam has dominion. And he lists about everything. Mm -hmm. Adam had dominion over the Eden school. Is that okay to say that? Mm -hmm. But God had dominion over him. Mm -hmm. That was it. Now we're ready to start. And by the way, the class is probably 20 hours long. All I'm going to do is just when it hits 9, stop. There's no kind of starting. There's a part 1, part 2. I, I can't divide it up. So we'll just go. We'll stop. Start the next day at the same place. Mm -hmm. um, uh, Devin, you want to read the first paragraph? But before you read it, before you read it, God's plan yesterday, is it the same plan today? Yes. Why? Because God is the same. Hebrews 13, 8, Jesus Christ the same yesterday, today, and forever. Malachi 3, 6, I am the Lord, I change not. Yeah, it's not going to change. Uh, Isaiah 1, 7, uh, James 1, 17, with whom there's no variableness, neither shadow nor turning. God doesn't change. Neither does His plan. Now, first paragraph. Under changed conditions, true education is still conformed to the creation, Creator's plan, the plan of the Eden School. Now, you pause one second. I'm going to interrupt you a lot. That's okay. <laughs> and you know I love you. Look, it changed, but God doesn't change. No, it didn't change, but something changed. As he reads the first paragraph, you tell me what changed. It's very plain. It says, this is what's changed. Go ahead. Start from the beginning again. Under changed conditions, true education is still conformed to the Creator's plan, the plan of the Eden School. Adam and Eve received instruction through direct communion with God. We behold the light of the knowledge of His glory in the face of Christ. What changed? Who was Adam and Eve's teacher? God. How? Face to? Face. face. Today? Who's our teacher? Jesus. John 6 45 they shall be taught of God but it's not face to face, face, to face. Mm -hmm. 2 Corinthians 4 6 for God who commanded the light to shine out of darkness has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face, face of Jesus Christ mm -hmm. but I don't see his face do you mm -hmm. now whose face you looking at mine <laughs> that's a poor substitute for Christ now right sister Addie <laughs> I have poor substitute but I better use the Lord's words, because if I don't have His face, I better have His mouth. Mm -hmm. Would you agree? Yeah. And I've got that. The great, the great principles of education are, ah, now we're getting back, are unchanged. They stand fast forever and ever. For they are the principles of the character of God. To aid the student in comprehending these principles, there's no direct communion with God as far as face to face. That verse in the face, you said the word when I got to it, in the face of Jesus Christ. Next verse, verse 7, we have this treasure in earthen vessels. Well, I'm sorry, it's an earthen vessel, but that's all right. I got God's word. Is that okay? And when you got God's word, well, that's as good as having God in the classroom in a sense because that's his word. If he were here, he'd say just what we're reading because he's unchanged. To aid the student in comprehending these principles. Now here's the problem we're going to run into. Let's pause for a moment. 
When you hit something that disagrees with what you think, you're brought to a decision. Yes. Yeah. The cross. That, that's the cross, right? No, you're brought to a decision. So I don't doubt that Sister Marie, you got all your ideas. Devin's got all his ideas. And Eddie's is full of ideas, I can tell by looking at you. And I know Aisha is just full of ideas. This is a scalpel, this class, to cut us all to pieces and remove the ideas that don't belong in God's educational program. What about me? I'm full of what? <laughs> ideas. Maybe I need the knife too. So I'll help you and you help me. Let's sharpen each other up. Iron sharpeneth iron. To aid the student in comprehending these principles and in entering into that relation with Christ, which will make them a controlling power in the life, should be the teacher's first effort and his constant aim. The teacher who accepts this aim is in truth a co-worker. You're either working for him or against him. Jesus said either with me or there. And if J Romans 8.31, if God is for me, who can be against me? Now, name some famous teachers in the Bible. Samuel. Who? Samuel. Samuel was a famous teacher. Mm -hmm. Moses. Moses was a famous Isaiah. teacher. Isaiah was a famous teacher. Solomon. Solomon <laughs> was a famous teacher. <laughs> then he kind of faltered, mm -hmm. and then he got back on track. Mm -hmm. Yeah. John. John. Jesus. 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 Okay. Peter. Peter. Paul. Ooh. Paul. Oh. Now, pause. In the Old Testament, you see something called the schools of the prophets. Mm -hmm. Elijah. Elijah, yeah. Let's take Elijah then. Mm -hmm. Was he a teacher? Yes. Now, well, I'll start and let somebody else finish it. Just before Elijah was taken to heaven, and by the way, you want to know something about heaven? Ask Elijah. Mm -hmm. Only two men ever been there. Mm -hmm. and, well, I'm sorry, the guys that were resurrected and taken to heaven. Mm -hmm. But Elijah and Enoch. Oh, and Moses, but he, he went through the back door of the grave, right? <laughs> Just before Elijah was taken to heaven, he visited the schools of the prophets, but notice, and instructed the students on the most important points of their education. So I guess he had to roll out some new lessons, right? Because the stuff I taught you yesterday, today, the important things are here. No way. Somebody read the next sentence. The lessons he had given them on former visits, he now repeated impressing upon the minds of the youth the importance of letting simplicity mark every feature of their education. There it is. Simple. S-I-M-P-L-A. Elijah, today, as soon as you're going to heaven, they knew he, were, he was going too because they went after him and you know they knew he was going. Uh, Eli, Elisha knew he was going. Mm -hmm. How do I know he knew he was going? Is the Bible yeah. Give me, tell me what it says. He said... Um, That's it. That's it. Portion. Yeah, give me a double portion. And Elijah said, "What? If you see me." Yeah. Once I'm gone, once I'm taken up, uh, and then he picked the coat up. Yeah, they knew. Mm -hmm. So the students, last lesson, final sermon. What's he going to say? Mm -hmm. Just what I said yesterday. <laughs> Come on, he brought the same thing. Mm -hmm. And I, well, you know, I'm going to give you rotten mangoes, and today I'll give you the ripe stuff. No, he just rolled out what he'd rolled out the day before. Mm -hmm. Only in this way could they receive the mold of heaven. No other way you can be fitted up for heaven. And go forth to work in the ways of the Lord. Now, pause. Was Adam's school simple? Yes. Mm -hmm. Genesis 2, 16, 17. Adam, you eat, you die. die. That's it. You eat, you die. What did Adam do? Eat. And he... <laughs> what's wrong with him? Come on, what's wrong with him? That's what we look at this morning. Uh, 2 Corinthians 11 verse 3. Eve lost what? The devil stole what from her? The, the simplicity that was in Christ. Christ is simple. Elijah was simple. Adam wasn't. Eve wasn't. You eat, you die. Oh, well. Uh... If conducted as God designs they should be, our schools in these closing days of the message will do a work similar to that done by the schools of the prophets. Now, before, Miss Marie, I think before you came in, I said to the, our young brother that we got a law in here, no traditions of men, right? Let me tell you where I got that law from. Who'd like to read? 
the laws of Christ's kingdom are so simple and yet so complete that man-made addition will create confusion. And the more simple our plans for work in God's service, the more we shall accomplish. Okay, I, I got a law. Less is more. Mm -hmm. If it's less of what man said and more of what I said, less is more. More in education is not always better if it's what man said. You sound so. You sound so uh, anti-tradition. No, I just uh, Matthew 15 verse 2. Why do your disciples transgress the tradition of the elders? Matthew 15 verse 9. Uh, in vain they do worship me, teaching for doctrines the commandments of men. The Bible is anti-tradition. Yeah, I'm pro-Bible. <laughs> Education in the Garden of Eden. By the way, is it possible to have your mind leavened with falsehood and think you've gotten something that just empowers you? Mm -hmm. Oh, yeah. Mm -hmm. It was grateful to the taste. And as she ate, now that word vivify, life. It means to give life, right? Revive, to vivify, vivacious, full of life. Ate that fruit, and Eve said, now I'm really, I'm really, I'm really alive. And in truth, she was really what? Dead, dead spiritually. And would die physically sooner or later, but dead spiritually. Yeah. Isn't that crazy? Mm -hmm. And imagined herself entering into a, upon a higher state of existence. Without a fear, she plucked and ate. Who redressed? In a state of strange, unnatural excitement, with her hands filled with forbidden fruit, she sought his presence and related all that had occurred. Whose presence? Um, yeah, now she's an agent of Satan. Mm -hmm. Is it 560? 560, 560 paragraph 0, which is probably the bleed over from page 55. Yeah, page 50, 50, I'm sorry, 56, paragraph 0, which means it carries over from page 55. Thank you. I, I did the notations a little different in some of these because I was in a hurry. <laughs> yeah, so. Uh, I have this sense of power. No, no, no. Seemingly you do. It seems you do, but you don't. After his transgression, did Adam have the same experience? Yes. Yeah, same experience. Yeah. Yeah, it's the same experience. Um, I was working once with a man who was addicted to this refined substance, this refined cocaine called crack. He told me, Man, this makes me feel all over glorious. <laughs> it makes me feel alive, revived. Mm -hmm. I said, no, wait a minute. It's just releasing dopamine that's already in your brain. Mm -hmm. You know, uh, false education is worse than crack. Mm -hmm. It sure is. I, what I should have said, false education is more deadly mm -hmm. than crack. Mm -hmm. It was by deception that Satan seduced angels plan doesn't change. Now he's deceiving us. Thus he has in all ages carried forward his work among men. He will continue this policy to the last. Should he, the devil, openly profess to be warring against God, if he came into class wearing an orange mohawk, foaming at the mouth, wearing uh, with his big pitchfork in his hand, rolling in the floor, cursing God, would you take a lesson from that man? No. no. So he comes with a PhD, silk suit, can articulate very clearly. He sits down and starts talking about higher criticism, and the students say, yeah, that man's got power. God, Mo, have mercy on us. But he never opens the Bible one time. And all he says is undermining the Scriptures. Okay. Should he openly? Brother Devin, from there. Should he open? See, I asked you to read parts. That way you got to pay attention. <laughs> Should he openly profess to be warring against God and his law? Men would beware. But he disguises himself and mixes truth with error. The most dangerous falsehoods are those that are mingled with truth. And what does it produce? A bunch of drunk students, but high on their own power that they don't have. An example, I tell you about my wife's, uh, did I tell you this? My wife and I were, by the way, we weren't healthy before. <laughs> we're healthy now, Devin. So I tell this unhealthy story. That wasn't yesterday. This was 40 years ago. Darlene and I were in a, a, a Mongolian restaurant. We got soup. She screamed. Yeah, she asked her. It's true. She screamed. She said, ah, that's what's wrong. She said, there's a frog in my soup. It's still kicking around. I looked. 
he has a frog in there. I said, wow. I said, look at this. Yeah, alive. Look at this one, Darlene. And there was a, uh, there was a cockroach in mine. What? Yes. Ask Darlene. Mongolian restaurant, frog and cockroach. Mm -hmm. Would you eat the soup once you saw a cockroach in there? Oh. You're telling me one cockroach spoils the whole bowl of soup? Yeah. And the devil knows one little lie spoils everything. Much of what the devil says in uh, Matthew 4, the, the temptation of the wilderness, the Eve would die. Yeah, a lot of it's true. The rapture theory, a whole lot of it's true. But you got parts that are deadly, you know. So having some of the truth might be worse than having none. Yes. It really is. By the way, I talked to Lemuel last night. I had a nice long talk. Yes, yes. He lost his phone. He lost his phone. He said the only meat he's eaten since he got he got home was a little chicken and a salad. <laughs> <laughs> and a, and a, it was really good. And I talked to his mother last night. She'll be here on Wednesday. Oh. And Lemmy was one of her lifestyle guests that just left. He was, a, he was an interesting fellow from New York. What a precious man. He said, I'm okay, Lou. You worried about me? I said, not at all. <laughs> the most dangerous faults that are those that are mingled with truth. Yeah, pretty simple. We're almost ready to start. This is the, the introduction here. Here is the danger of Devon. The attractions is in these institutions are such, and the teachings so intermixed with error and sophistry. Now, before we get to this, Romans 10, 17, faith comes by hearing and hearing by the Word of God. You flip it around backwards, you want to break down your faith, break down a faith comes by hearing and hearing by the words of God. Let me change it. Doubt comes by hearing and hearing the words of some say men, some say Satan. Okay, yeah, they're both okay, right? Uh, that they, uh, the attraction, these, this is the principle. The attractions in these institutions are such, and the feelings so intermixed with error and sophistry, that they cannot discern the poison of sentiment mingled with the useful impression. Can't see it. There is such an undercurrent. You know what undercurrent is, right? Undertow. It sucks you down, and it's too late once it has you. There is such an undercurrent, it works in such a manner that many do not perceive it, but it is constantly at work. Certain ideas are constantly advanced by professors and repeated over and over, and doubt comes by hearing and hearing by the word of man, and at last the mind begins to assimilate 2 Corinthians 3.18, and beholding you're changed. Assimilate and conform to these ideas. We had a lifestyle guest. We became very good friends. He said, I gave up creation. I gave up Genesis. Went to school, took an evolution class. I gave up Genesis. <sighs> Thank you. Well said. He lost his... So, well, science says, and man says, and well, yeah, but what does God say? Oh, it doesn't matter. <sighs> The system of education instituted at the beginning of the world was to be a model for man throughout all its aftertime. And these things were written for our admonition and a lesson to us on where Adam and Eve went wrong. Now, who read Education 21? Sister Addie, a little one for me, if you don't mind. The, the one on the bottom. Yeah, to make them sober. We're going to sober up these people. Uh, just a moment about the teachers, and we're ready to head into our lesson for today. It's very short. The holy pair were not only children under the fatherly care of God, but students receiving instruction from the all-wise Creator. They were visited by angels, were granted communion with their Maker, with no obscuring veil between. They were full of the vigor imparted by the tree of life in the eye. Uh, now this is it right here. Their intellectual power was but a little less than that of the angels. Were Adam and Eve, were they smart? Mm -hmm. But not quite as smart as the angels. But the angels and Adam and Eve, they were smart, but not smart enough. Would you agree? Yeah, intellect here means nothing. You're smart, so what? Not as smart as Adam. I'm as smart as Adam, not as smart as the angels. Being smart won't help you. A fiery stream. Now let's count up the angels up there. Now I realize I underlined it, by the way. I underlined it. In Daniel 7.10, to see, you know, the beginning of the judgment. Thrones are, thrones are cast down, judgment is set, and all that. But I underlined it. it remember, it says, this stood before him. There might have been a whole bunch behind him. I don't know. How many angels? Thousand what? How many angels before the throne? Thousand. 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 
thousands. You got to You know how many that is? If you add it all up. Thousands and thousands. It's ten thousand times ten thousand. So you got to add your. I did it for you. <laughs> thousand thousands. That's a million. That is really. Believe me, I got my calculator. This is real. Ten thousand times ten thousand. That's a hundred thousand. I'm sorry, a hundred million. That totals one hundred one million. Now, when the thrones were when the judgment did sit. The devil had been cast out. Mm -hmm. So in front of the throne, 100 million angels. Must be a big building, huh? 100 million angels. How many were taken out of heaven by the tail of the dragon? Give me the fraction. One third. One third. Now, if you take out one third, then you have 100 million. And I realize there might have been a whole bunch behind. I don't know. This is just a figure. If you remove one third and you're left with 100 million, then you just removed 50 million. 150 million minus one third is 100 million. So there are at least 50 million evil angels mm -hmm. if you can trust the math in Daniel 7.10. You know the biggest stadium in uh, planet Earth? Or at least in the United States. Let me say United States. When I was uh, you know, in, in high school, football crazy, right? What's the biggest stadium? And you don't know, do you? Let me show you a picture of it. The Rose Bowl in Michigan. Hmm. I'm going to see it more than 100,000. Now, if you wanted to have a convention of the devil's angels, you've got to have 500 of those stadiums to hold them all. That's right. You've got to have 500 of those stadiums to hold them all. Oh, there are a whole lot of evil angels out there. They, weren't, they were smart, but not smart what? Enough. Uh, somebody said uh, he's got a photographic memory for the Bible. So does the devil. <laughs> right? Yeah. Two John, James 2.19 devil believes even. He believes what he reads and he what? Trembles. He just trembles, shakes. The Garden of Eden was a schoolroom. Nature was a lesson book. Now, we open up the textbook in Eden and we study a lesson. Very simply, now I'm ready to start. Early writings, page 40. How many worlds are out there? Just give me a rough word for it. How many worlds are out there? Unnumbered. Yeah, a bunch. Right? Unnumbered, a bunch. What were you going to say? Uh, Unnumbered, a bunch of them, right? I don't know. Could be 10,000, could be 50, could be, I don't know. You don't know either, right? Mm -hmm. But I know this. We had a tree here, and they have a tree, tree there. Who'd like to read? Mr. Aisha, go ahead. The Lord has given me a view of other worlds. Wings were given me, and an angel attended me from the city to a place that was bright and glorious. The grass of the place was living green, and the birds were warbled a sweet song. I asked one of the inhabitants why they were so much more lovely than those on the earth. You folks look really nice here. You're sweet looking. They don't look like that on the earth. Why not? Answer? Now I'm going to show you the answer, but you know the answer. Why? Keep this we lost the simplicity. Yeah. We're marred by sin. All that. Marred, lost the simplicity, marred by sin, this, that, and the other. This is the, this is the answer, right? The yeah. The reply was, mm -hmm. we've lived, yeah, we've lived in strict obedience to the commandments of God, and have not fallen by disobedience like those folks down there on the earth. Mm -hmm. Then I saw trees. Two trees. Yeah. One, one looked a whole lot like what? The tree of life. life in the city. The fruit of both looked beautiful, but of one, they could not eat. Mm -hmm. They had power to eat of both. They, they were free to. Mm -hmm. If Devin wanted to go up and eat, he could. There wasn't a barbed wire fence around it. They had power to eat of both, but were forbidden to eat of one. Then my attention tending angel said to me, Devin, you want to read? None in this place have tasted of the forbidden tree, but if they should eat, they would fall. Mm -hmm. Just like we did. God told all those worlds out there, you eat, you die. Mm -hmm. He told this world here, you eat, you die. They pass the test. And people say it's not fair for God to give that kind of test to Adam and Eve. That's our subject. That's our subject this morning. 
But wait a minute, she believed the devil. Doesn't that count for something? Doesn't, doesn't that count for something? She sincerely believed the devil. And she sin sincerely believed God was a liar. Romans 3, 4, let God be true and every man a liar. And she believed uh, the devil was honest and God was a liar. But her belief did not save her from the penalty of sin. She believed, disbelieved the words of God. Yeah, that's what it's I gave up Genesis 1 and 2. Took a class. Learned about evolution. <laughs> let, me, let me tell you what the devil said when he saw that. Um, man came out of the school. I'm, I'm not going to give you any details. This is true. Came out of the school. I gave up Genesis. I took an evolution class. Now I know Genesis 1 is not true. The devil said, one down, 27 million to go. Yeah, it's just, this is how he works. Through what? False education. Yet in his great mercy, this is the test. He appointed Adam no severe test. Let me pause a second. Now that's a hard test, right? Devin, there's your test this morning right there on the right. Go ahead, give me your answer or you fail. Go ahead. Give me your answer or you fail. What's the answer? You got 10 seconds. That's a tough test. Now wait a minute here. How many trees did God give Adam to eat in that garden? All. Except one. Did he give him did he give Adam the most perfect woman ever made? Yes. Did he give him good food? Yes. Mm -hmm. Good fellowship? Mm -hmm. God and he gave him everything, right? Mm -hmm. Now take that and apply it to today. Let's say I give you everything I've got. Hundred trillion dollars, give you the ten thousand acres, give you a mansion to live in. And I say, but Devin, here's my last quarter. Don't you touch it. You touch my quarter. I just gave you $20 billion. You touch my quarter, and you're going to die. And that man walks over here and steals my quarter. What's that tell me about him? No, he can't be. Trusted. Thank you. It's a trust issue. Forget all the rest. It's a trust issue. God could not trust Adam. And God can't trust you. You're in trouble. Yeah. Eve did not trust God. God is a liar. Yet, in His great mercy, He appointed Adam no severe test. The very lightness of the prohibition made the sin exceedingly great. He just ate a piece of fruit. That made it worse. It and we took my nickel, man. <laughs> that made it worse, not better. We only stole a nickel from you. Come on. That makes it worse. Because if He's still a nickel, He's what? Come on. It's, yeah, you steal my nickel. I steal your little Honda. <laughs> made it worse. If Adam could not bear that, she reasons it out. If he couldn't bear the smallest test, how's he ever going to bear the great ones? He could not have endured a greater trial. Had been, that's where I got it from, entrusted. It's a trust issue. Mm -hmm. I didn't say it, God did. With higher responsibilities. Uh, Genesis 2.16, from, from every tree you shall freely eat. Every tree. But the day you eat that tree, 17, you die. Now, the plan of salvation was so arranged. Come on, is God good or what? Mm -hmm. I read that and I thought, what does this mean? The plan of salvation was so arranged that when Adam was tested, temptation was removed from him. What's that mean? What does this mean now? Mm -hmm. Temptation was as far as... And look, when God does something, God does something. Mm -hmm. He got the temptation as far as He could away from Adam. Mm -hmm. Eden brought the fruit. God was working. Okay, I'm going to work this out. I'm going to make the temptation as minimal as possible. What did He do? Here's what He did. Who'd want to read it? Says Brother Devin. No, Sister Marie, your turn. Mm -hmm. What did God do? God couldn't have made the test easier. When Adam was tempted, he was not hungry. God so arranged it that Adam's belly was jammed full. Mm -hmm. And then he said, eat. What he should have said is, <laughs> number one, I'm not hungry. Number two, I'm not disobedient. Mm -hmm. And he ate that thing anyway. <sighs> now you come in here, final exam. At the end of the year, we got one test. This is the make or break exam. 
I hand you your paper. By the way, how do you spell Addie anyway? Addie, if you can write Addie, how do you spell that? You don't know? I don't either. How do you, Aisha, I don't know how to spell Addie. I E S H A? I don't know. I got it right, okay. I E, it's still too, that's too complicated. We'll make something. No, we use me. No, no, me, me, Lou. Come on, Lou. It's easier than Aisha, right? I got the easiest name in here. Yours name's hard. Your name's kind of easy. Your name, I don't know. How, your name, I don't know. Let's use mine. So, no, you're the teacher. Let's turn it around. You're the teacher. I'm the student. You give me my final exam. Okay, teacher. Let's see what you got for me. What is your name? The What do I write? L E W. I hand it back in. He says A plus. You passed. Let's go. What does that tell me about the teacher? He wants me to pass the class. Yeah. Come on, you don't know your name? <laughs> what does that tell you about the teacher? Come on, man. Thank you. As easy as you could make it. And he still failed the test. What is your name? Eddie. <laughs> F. He wasn't even hungry. No, he couldn't make it any easier, so he drove out the man. Had to drive him out. Come on, he had to drive him out. Yeah. I'll tell you why. Because true education cannot function in the climate of distrust. It can't. 3 5 of Proverbs, trust in the Lord with what? Then you got the classroom. He drove out the man, and he placed at the east of, of the Garden of Eden cherubim. What does the angel have? What did that angel have? Armed with what? So we have a saying, you know, when I was a criminal, we I know this is a long time ago, he had a saying, he's packing heat. Mm -hmm. <laughs> what does that mean? He's got a gun, right? Yeah. What's the angel packing heat? Yeah, yeah flaming sword. Who was that sword for? Yeah. yeah, yeah. That sword had Adam's name on it. If he comes in. Now, second now, now the next question. Did Adam believe God this time? Yeah. You walk up to that angel, he's gonna cut you in two. Yeah. What Adam say? I believe it. <laughs> Adam learned, but he learned what we would say. He learns thee. Thank you, my brother. Just like us, we learn the hard way. Not all the conditions of that first school of Eden will be found in the school of the future life. We ought to read this and say, we ought to read this and rejoice. It's going to change. No tree of knowledge of good and evil will afford opportunity for temptation. Won't be there. Now, why? Miss Aisha, you want to read why? No tempter is there. No possibility of wrong. Why? Every character has withstood the testing of evil, and none are longer susceptible to its power. Ah, we finally passed thee. Yes. And now we can be? Free. I can say trusted. <laughs> yes. That's it. I'll pray. Father in heaven, that's, uh, education part one, pretty simple. Help us to uh, learn where Eve did not. Have mercy and help us as we continue our study. I ask it in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. That's it. So. Uh